From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Was a Middle East junket purely personal and not on the taxpayer's dime? A challenger in a controversial race for state representative is pressuring the incumbent for an answer. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us everyone. I'm Kristen Bazinski. Well, the race in the 116th district just keeps getting hotter on the heels of a controversial YouTube video showing college pictures of Representative Tara Tuhill. Her challenger is questioning her trip to Israel and wants to know who paid for it. The trip comes with photos. This one was part of a short lived commercial run by her Democratic challenger. It shows the representative atop a camel with another state representative, Nick Micarelli of the Philadelphia area. Published reports about the trip have two hills saying the trip was paid by a combination of funds from a Philadelphia area Jewish Federation plus personal and campaign funds. Two Hill spoke to News 13 by phone today, but refused to give an on the record interview. Instead, she sent a brief email saying, I went to Israel on an educational trip. Absolutely no taxpayer money was used. These are desperate attacks. While her challenger, Democratic candidate Ransom Young, admits using the shot in a commercial that was run briefly, he says it's not an attack, just a trip by the incumbent, which raises questions. If this was a lobbyist trip, come out and say it's a lobbyist trip. If you use campaign money, explain why you used it improperly. One day she's interviewed, she says it's an uh, educational trip. The next day she says it's a personal trip. There's too many unanswered questions. And I believe the people in this area are smarter and they're starting to see through it. Now, according to published reports, Representative Micarelli has refused comment about Two Hill or the trip. Lawyers for former State Senator Rafael Musto say he's too ill to face trial on corruption charges. They've asked a federal judge to either drop the charges against him or put off the trial indefinitely. The 84-year-old Musto was indicted back in 2010 on fraud and bribery charges. This is video of Musto here in Hazleton a few years ago. Now, lawyers and medical experts hired by the prosecution agree the disease which has affected his liver has left him too frail to withstand a trial due to bouts of fatigue and confusion, which can leave him bedridden for days at a time. The 2010 indictment alleged Musto accepted tens of thousands of dollars in building renovations and cash in return for supporting funding for two state projects. Last week, a federal grand jury added two bribery counts, saying Musto received cash payments from individuals affiliated with local governments in Luzerne County in return for his support on two multi-million dollar state loans. Firefighters say they were lucky to stop a house fire as fast as they did because the damage could have been a lot worse and people could have been hurt. Flames and smoke were shooting from the second floor of this house. It is believed that the fire in Schuylkill County Monday afternoon sparked after an electrical issue. The home is on Pine Creek Drive in Rush Township, a somewhat remote location. Water tankers from nearby and as far as Hazel Township Fire Company in Luzerne County were called in. Hometown's Assistant Fire Chief Dave Cool says fire crews also had a difficult time getting to the fire because of obstructions throughout the house. I mean, it, it could have been worse the way the construction at a home, it's uh, built over top of existing uh, interior pieces. So we had a hard time actually finding into the walls because it was a uh, plaster and lath and then plank and uh, drywall and everything else. Now, all of the owner's pets were brought out of this blaze safely and PPL crews were called in to shut down power to that home. The family was not able to return right away and some of the windows of that large house were already boarded up just a short time after the flames were knocked down. A 23-year-old woman was flown to a trauma center Monday night after this serious crash in Hazel Township near Freeland. Samantha Gonzalez was behind the wheel of the car and drove off the road and right into a parked big rig. Gonzalez, who troopers say lives in Freeland, suffered head injuries. An investigation into why Gonzalez left the road in the first place is ongoing.
A Hazleton teen told police he was involved in a recent robbery and that he received a few french fries as payment. 19-year-old Philip Dunstan admitted to helping his two buddies hold up this Hazleton business on Alter Street. Dunstan says he was the lookout person for the October crime. He told police that it was a Another person named Gary who came up with the plan to rob Pence's and that in the end, Dunstan says he as pay, he was paid with French fries for helping carry out the crime. No word if the Gary referred to in this robbery is the Gary who West Hazleton police arrested last week for robbing Puff and Stuff with a machete. 22-year-old Gary Cripp II and another man were locked up for that crime. Both admitted to having something to do with recent robberies in Hazleton. The Lady Cougar field hockey squad hit the field Monday night. Were they able to score a win and move forward in the playoffs? We'll have highlights of that matchup in sports. Plus, it's no longer happening just on the streets. Drug dealers are doing their illegal job in busy places, places you might not even think of, and they're selling some strong stuff. It's called the Emergency Operations Plan, and it's put in place at the Hazleton Area School District to keep students safe in the event of an emergency. Our Jasmine Brooks joins Dr. Francis Antonelli now for this week's Super Segment. For this week's Super Segment, I am joined by the Hazleton Area School District Superintendent, Dr. Francis Antonelli, and what we're talking about today is called the Emergency Operations Plan. It's a plan put in place for things like tornadoes and floods, but also it deals with the nuclear plant that sits in Berwick just miles away from here. So let's talk about who you are meeting today. Okay, we were notified in the past few days uh, by Pima which is the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, that we uh, would be required to perform an emergency evacuation drill relative to a, a nuclear incident at the uh, Berwick Power Plant. These folks are on site today. Uh, there are four levels or severity levels of scenarios that can occur at that power plant in Berwick and we are actually doing a tabletop drill through the four levels of uh, uh, response depending on the situation uh, in Berwick. Okay, can you kind of go over some of those levels and how serious they are? Well they'll range from a standby um, until they can determine to a, a site level uh, event where the uh, vent itself is contained on site at the power plant to a uh, general emergency, uh, to a uh, full evacuation of our students uh, from the affected areas, which is basically a 10 mile uh, radius around that power plant. We would have to be very cognizant about evacuating uh, students from this campus, for instance, from uh, Drums and uh, Valley and possibly even Freeland, and uh, making sure that those students do not uh, uh, and are not transported back into the affected area that could be contaminated. So we would have to have host schools available uh, outside that 10 mile zone uh, radius, uh, host schools available to accept these students until they can be reunited with parents. You were telling me earlier though, this is, the administration is dealing with this right now. You're not going to Freeland and saying, okay, let's practice this evacuation. You're dealing with this right now. Correct. We're not actually mobilizing students and evacuating them to host schools, but we're doing a tabletop drill where we have all our procedures in place. We're doing our phone calls, for instance, the bus contractors. We're doing our phone calls to food service directors in case these students have to be housed for an extended period of time that we can feed them. So we're doing a tabletop drill to accommodate these students uh, until they can return safely uh, to their homes within that 10 mile radius of the power plant that could be a contaminated area. And the emergency operations plan is also something you use for floods or tornadoes. That, that's correct. Uh, and believe it or not, we have had incidents here in the past few years with floods, with tornadoes. And even uh, downtown, we had a train derailment with potentially hazardous material on board that train uh, where we had to effectuate our uh, emergency evacuation plan for schools uh, within the uh, radius of that train derailment. All right. Anything else you want to add? Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. You know, we do welcome the opportunity to work with Pima and FEMA to do these tabletop drills because, quite frankly, it keeps us 
on top of our game and it really uh, confirms for us that we have a sound plan in place to protect students and staff in the event of an emergency evacuation. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. For this week's Super Segment, I'm Jasmine Brooks and I'll see you next week. The financial tap was turned on, the money will flow in, and that will mean better water service for the greater Hazleton area. The Hazleton City Authority is getting a state grant of more than $6.5 million. The money will allow the authority to replace over 27,000 feet of deteriorating water mains, which carry water to most of the greater Hazleton area. That will mean improved, more reliable service to more than 14,000 households, which rely on the system for water. As a bonus, the authority says the project should create about 30 construction jobs. The PennVest grant was approved by the state's Infrastructure Investment Authority this morning. You use it to protect yourself and your loved ones from getting burned by the sun. Tonight, we learned that some sunscreens are actually being pulled from store shelves because they are doing the exact opposite and actually igniting people's skin. 23 different banana boat products are being pulled from store shelves. All are ultra mist products. Five people total have reported being burned by the block all were using the 30 and 50 SPF sprays. Banana Boat Company officials say the spray valve is actually applying too much sunscreen to users. In return, takes longer to dry and the product could ignite near fire. Now you can get more information on this recall by calling 1-800-SAFE-SUN. But if you're using the sprays, you should stop immediately, especially parents who use it on their children. Falling rain on this fall day, and it looks like you should keep your umbrellas handy. Starting first in Schuylkill County, where we see the clouds and showers will continue through the night and into your Wednesday. 40% chance of rain tonight, 53 will be our low. And as I said, clouds and rain possible in the Schuylkill County area on your Wednesday. 68 will be your high temp. Now a dip in the pool would be nice this time of the year. That's what Luciano Gabriel from the West Hazleton School is doing in this creative condition with his friend Josh. No swimming probably until next spring as we are quickly falling into winter. Tonight we see the low down to 53, so a mild evening, but the rain continues and it looks like it will continue into Wednesday in Greater Hazleton with a cloudy sky and a high up to 65 degrees. On your screen right now, your winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played everyone. Your daily number 040 big 49290. Quinto 46607 and treasure hunt 10 19 24 26 29. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening, the Klein Township Beautification Committee is hosting their first fundraiser. It will be an Election Day hoagie sale on Tuesday, November 6th. Cost is just $3.50 per hoagie, and they can be picked up at the Municipal Building from 8 to 8 p.m. All money raised will benefit the committee. For more information or to order your hoagies, please call 570-929-7071. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Stanley E. Wagner of Hazel Township. Gravesite service will be held Wednesday at 11 a.m. in the Mountain View Cemetery. There will be no public viewing. The Firo Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Clarence Hendricks of Weatherly. Funeral is Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Rose Watkins, formerly of West Hazelton. Funeral is Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. from the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 9 to 10.30. And Claire E. Brown of Mountaintop. Arrangements will be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for second best when dining out. Discover Mia's new low-priced dinner menu. And remember, there's always plenty of free gated parking behind the Markle Building. All right, Fred, thanks so much. Well, ahead tonight on News 13, drug dealers are getting brazen and doing their illegal business in broad daylight. And wait till you hear where the deals are going down. It might shock those who have a little grocery shopping to do tonight. That story is next. Stay with us. 
One chief of police calls it the drug of choice to the greater Hazleton area. Heroin is being sold left and right and dealers are going down. But you may be surprised just where they're selling the goods. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Drug dealers will stop at nothing to get their hands on cold, hard cash. Police are catching deals going down in front of businesses in broad daylight. Our Jasmine Brooks reports from a Sugarloaf Township parking lot that has recently seen its fair share of drug activity. Imagine dropping by the grocery store to pick up a few things and spotting a drug deal going down in the parking lot. That's what's happened twice in the past three months in this store parking lot in Sugarloaf Township. This was Monday afternoon. The man in cuffs is 41-year-old Francis Dugan. Police say he's a Hazleton resident and a known drug dealer to the area. Police set up a controlled buy with Dugan on Monday afternoon in a parking lot right outside of the Laurel Mall. You know, the, the guy we arrested was uh, selling heroin pretty pretty uh, decent amounts in the area, and including Sugarloaf Township, unfortunately, for him now. Dugan sold an undercover cop a brick of heroin, equivalent to 50 bags, for 500 bucks. A big drug deal, out in the open, in the middle of the afternoon. Some might say this was a bold move. Chief Joshua Winters of the Sugarloaf Police Department disagrees. Most drug transactions happen in places just like this, and I don't think people are aware that that's happening right next to them. So I think, I think it, you know, in my experience, it, we, uh, we've, I've been involved in numerous investigations. Most of them happen right in front of people, and they, they just don't know. The average person may not know, but police, on the other hand, are keeping a close eye on drug activity. We're just addressing every case we can. You know, if, if we develop information that we can uh, investigate and make an arrest, we do. If we don't, we pass that information along to a department that can. Police say this is the second drug dealer they've taken down in this exact parking lot in just three months. Back in August, 43-year-old De Wins De Jesus Cruz was caught dealing several hundred dollars worth of heroin here, which happens to be the drug of choice in the area. That's the biggest problem in the area, in my opinion. Drug, you know, the, the uh, specific drug, um, I think meth is going to make a, a, a run here soon. So are regular shoppers worried for their safety? No. Well, it is quiet. It is quiet. It, it's close to the mall. It's nice. I never had a problem here. I'm coming here years and years. And the chief says she probably shouldn't be. Most drug dealers are looking to get their money and get out of town. Reporting for News 13, Jasmine Brooks, Sugarloaf Township. Well, it's becoming more and more common. Pipe, copper piping stolen from properties and traded in for cold hard cash. A West Hazelton home that sits along 3rd Street was targeted last Thursday. Police say someone broke in and stole copper piping from the first floor and basement of the home that's currently under construction. Uh, it seems that uh, this is starting to be a rather popular thing that's going on. Any abandoned houses, houses that are for sale, um, people are entering them and stealing all the copper pipes and then obviously trading them in at the scrapyards for cash. Now, police warn the public that empty homes are the ones most often targeted. Homeowners are advised to keep the properties locked up and lit up. Police also suggest asking neighbors to keep an extra eye out to prevent anything from being taken or damaged. A Hazleton teen told police he was involved in a recent robbery and that he received a few French fries as his payment. 19-year-old Philip Dunstan admitted to helping his two buddies hold up this Hazleton business on Alter Street. Dunstan says he was the lookout person for the October crime. He told police that it was a person named Gary who came up with the plan to rob Pensies and that in the end, Dunstan says he was paid with French fries for helping carry out the crime. No word if the Gary referred to in this robbery is the Gary who West Hazleton police arrested last week for robbing Puff and Stuff with a machete. 22-year-old Gary Cripp II and another man were locked up for that crime, both admitted to having something to do with recent robberies in Hazleton.
And copper piping, not all that's being swiped in West Hazleton these days. Someone on Deer Run Road told police late last week they had two packages delivered by the post office stolen from right outside their front door. The victim discovered the theft after tracking the shipments and realizing they were delivered days ago. Police say this should serve as a warning to all local residents to think twice before having packages sent to your home when you may not be there. Well, it could have been worse. Fire investigators in Schuylkill County say quick work in knocking down a fire yesterday, limited damage and saved lives. Flames and smoke were shooting from the second floor of this house. It is believed that the fire in Schuylkill County Monday afternoon sparked after an electrical issue. The homes on Pine Creek Drive in Rush Township, a somewhat remote location. Water tankers from nearby and as far as Hazel Township Fire Company in Luzerne County were called in. Hometown's Assistant Fire Chief Dave Cool says fire crews also had a difficult time getting to the fire because of obstructions throughout the house. I mean, it, it could have been worse the way the construction at a home, it's uh, built over top of existing uh, interior pieces. So we had a hard time actually finding into the walls because it was a uh, plaster and lath and then plank and uh, drywall and everything else. Now, all of the owner's pets were brought out of the blaze safely and PPL crews were called in right away to shut down power to the home. The family was not able to return right away and some of the windows of the large house were already boarded up just a short time after the flames were knocked down. A Freeland woman remains in the hospital after a violent crash in Hazel Township. 23-year-old Samantha Gonzalez had to be flown to a trauma center Monday night after the serious crash in Hazel Township near Freeland. Samantha Gonzalez was behind the wheel of the car and drove off the road and right into a parked big rig. Police are still investigating why Gonzalez left the road in the first place. That investigation is ongoing. Keep it here on your information station tonight. Fred Barletta has tonight's sports action. He's talking field hockey, plus districts for both D11 and D2, plus a local race for state representative with international intrigue, why the challenger is questioning the incumbent's trip to Israel. The financial tap was turned on, the money will flow in, and that will mean better water service for the greater Hazleton area. The Hazleton City Authority is getting a state grant of more than $6.5 million. The money will allow the authority to replace over 27,000 feet of deteriorating water mains, which carry water to most of the greater Hazleton area. That will mean improved, more reliable service to more than 14,000 households which rely on the system for water. As a bonus, the authority says the project should create about 30 construction jobs. The PennVest grant was approved by the state's Infrastructure Investment Authority this morning. The race in the 116th district just keeps getting hotter. On the heels of a controversial YouTube video showing college pictures of Representative Tara Tuhill, her challenger is questioning her trip to Israel and wants to know who paid for it. The trip comes with photos. This one was part of a short-lived commercial run by her Democratic challenger. It shows the representative atop a camel with another state representative, Nick Micarelli of the Philadelphia area. Published reports about the trip have two hills saying the trip was paid by a combination of funds from a Philadelphia area Jewish Federation plus personal and campaign funds. Two Hill spoke to News 13 by phone today, but refused to give an on-the-record interview. Instead, she sent a brief email saying, I went to Israel on an educational trip. Absolutely no taxpayer money was used. These are desperate attacks. While her challenger, Democratic candidate Ransom Young, admits using the shot in a commercial that was run briefly, he says it's not an attack, just a trip by the incumbent, which raises questions. If this was a lobbyist trip, come out and say it's a lobbyist trip. If you use campaign money, explain why you used it improperly. One day she's interviewed, she says it's an uh, educational trip. The next day she says it's a personal trip. There's too many unanswered questions. And I believe the people in this area are smarter and they're starting to see through it. Now, according to published reports, Representative Micarelli has refused comment about Two Hill or the trip. Lawyers for former State Senator Rafael Musto say he's too ill to face trial on corruption charges. They've asked a federal judge to either drop the charges against him 
or put off the trial indefinitely. The 84-year-old Musto was indicted back in 2010 on fraud and bribery charges. This is video of Musto leaving the federal courthouse in Scranton after his arraignment. Lawyers and a medical expert hired by the prosecution agree the disease which has affected his liver has left him too frail to withstand a trial due to bouts of fatigue and confusion, which can leave him bedridden for days at a time. The 2010 indictment alleged Musto accepted tens of thousands of dollars in building renovations and cash in return for supporting funding for two state projects. Last week, a federal grand jury added two bribery counts, saying Musto received cash payments from individuals affiliated with local governments in Luzerne County in return for his support on two multi-million dollar state loans. And still ahead, how a state grant coming to the Hazleton area will not only improve water service, but create some jobs too. And later, some shocking news from the world of sunscreen. We'll tell you what popular brand has been recalled. More than 20 of its products. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Expectations for the Lady Cougar field hockey team last night. For the first time in 20 years, they got to host a District 2 playoff game. So, and they're the number four seed. They're taking on Delaware Valley, the number five seed. It's a team they beat. They beat them actually less than three weeks ago. Taking a look at the action here at Harmon Geist. And right there, bang, Delaware Valley on the board. A little bit of a surprise. They jumped out to a 1 0 lead. Lady Cougars, of course, wearing the home whites. And they're coming right back at him. And when you have uh, Selena Garzi on the team, you figure that's a threat anytime. But as you can see right here, that's Garzi trying to battle her way through. They were extremely tough. Talking to the uh, Del Val coach after the game, they uh, knew about Selena because of last game. And they were really, really trying to deny her any angles. She really uh, had one good look all night long. But now Delaware Valley nursing the one nothing lead. And take a look at this, in the goal again, 2-0 in favor of the Warriors. All of this happening in the first half. Lady Cougars making some gallant efforts, but could not put it in, even though they outshot them 17-6 in the game. It would end just the way you saw it there. 2-0, Delaware Valley. It'll be the Warriors who advance to the District 2 tournament. They will go on and they will meet Coughlin. If you take a look, the brackets look like this. Coughlin waiting in the wings, and it will be, as we said, Delaware Valley. Other half of the bracket, it's Honesdale and Wyoming Valley West. Those games will both be played tomorrow. Now, meanwhile, today, we've got a full slate of games field hockey double-A. Crestwood Northwest, that one is up in Mountaintop. Wyoming area is in Dallas. Wyoming Sem is hosting Lake Lehman, and Redeemer is uh, entertaining Nanny Coke. There are the uh, District 2 double A's. Now, in uh, girls soccer, this is District 11. That gets going tonight. It's Pottsville and Emmaus. And that's going to be down at Tamaqua High School. That's going to be a 7 o'clock start. Double A, Tamaqua will be uh, playing Notre Dame of Green Pond. And that one is at Tamaqua, so a little double dip right there. Let's go to volleyball. Hazel Tadari made easy work of things yesterday. 3 nothing. straight set winners over Wyoming area. They don't get much of a rest. They're right back at it today. They're taking on Holy Redeemer up in the Valley. Other volleyball today, MMI, they're at GAR. Major League Baseball, well, if you're a Giants fan, you're extremely happy. They did it again. They came back when people thought they were done. If you're a baseball fan, it was a yawner last night. They jumped out to an early lead. Even Matt Cain knocked in a run. How about the Cardinals? They scored how many runs in the last three games? One? That's hard to believe. National Football League last night. Detroit scored late, way, way short of what they needed. The Bears dominated them. Put it in the books. Chicago, 13. The Lions, 7. And you know, we don't have to wait much longer for football. But Thursday night, a given. Two more days, and we'll get a little bit more of it. Hey, how hungry are you tonight? The most popular wing night in town is up at Bottlenecks. That's right, they've got the area's best wings. And every Tuesday, they're just $9.95 for all you can eat. All of the delicious flavors. You can have as many as you like. You can't go wrong, and they are delicious. Up at Bottlenecks every Tuesday. They sponsor us 
not only on Tuesdays, but it's a great place. Now, you use it to protect yourself and your loved ones from getting burned by the sun. Tonight, we learned that some sunscreens are actually being pulled from store shelves because they are doing the exact opposite and actually igniting people's skins. 23 different banana boat products are affected. All are ultra mist products. Five people total have reported being burned by the block. All were using the 30 and 50 SPF sprays. Banana Boat Company officials say the spray valve is actually applying too much sunscreen to users in return, taking longer to dry, and the product could ignite near fire. Now, you can get more information on this recall by calling 1-800-SAFE-SUN. But if you're using the sprays, you should stop immediately, especially parents who use it on their children. Falling rain on this fall day, and it looks like you should probably keep your umbrellas pretty handy. Unfortunately, over the next 24 hours in Schuylkill County, we're going to see clouds and showers continuing tonight into your Wednesday. We'll see the temp dripping, dropping down to 53 degrees. I think I'm thinking of the rain dripping, dropping. All right, Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking like cloudy skies in Schuylkill County, rain showers sticking around. We climb to 68 on Wednesday, Thursday 66, Friday it's looking like the sun returns a bit to end off a work week and a high near 66. And then for your Saturday, partly sunny skies primarily, but we do see clouds and a chance of rain. 64 will be our high temp. And a dip in a pool would be pretty nice this time of the year. That's what Luciano Gabriel from the West Hazelton School is doing in this creative condition with his friend Josh. No swimming, probably until next spring as we quickly fall into winter, but we can all have a little wishful thinking, I think. Cloudy skies with a chance of rain for the rest of tonight, and your temp will dip to 53 degrees here in Greater Hazleton. And here we go. We need to get through Wednesday where we see clouds and rain. 65 will be our high on Wednesday. We're down into the 40s Wednesday night, and then it's looking not too bad for the rest of the work week and into the beginning of the weekend as we see sunshine Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we're almost hitting 70 on Friday. 67 will be our high temp. Your forecast tonight brought to you by Sand Springs Country Club with weekly restaurant specials. All specials are served with soup or salad. Chicken Sicilian for just $9.95 is our featured dish on this Tuesday. Make sure you stop by Sand Springs Country Club on 10 Clubhouse Drive in Drums. Call 788-5845. Visit them on the web at sandspringsgolf.com. Or you can also find Sand Springs on Facebook. That will do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or go to News 13's website at ssptv.com. That's where you're going to find everything Greater Hazleton, Schuylkill County, and beyond. It's all just a click away. On behalf of your News 13 team, be safe. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Stay dry, everyone. Good night.